Recording is on. Hello? I could hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, we are back. So yeah. we may, I'm going to try uh, sharing my desktop again. Yeah, it was looking good. That, I like it. Uh, I was just talking to Dr. Joshua Pierce on the internet. He's from the Michigan Open Source Technology, Sustainability Technology Lab, and he wants to do a big contest on something that will be a powerful open source product that can undercut the current market. Now I'll see if we nice. could have join on the on the cordless the drill. drill. That's, that is a billion dollar market in the U.S. alone. So that would be amazing. Yes, yeah, and see. in Guyana, there's other travel because if you get a foreign manufactured object, it's very expensive at the border. They tack really huge duties on it. Yeah. So, do but they have if you generate it from drills in Guyana? Uh, they, of course, they have all of these things, but anything you want in Guyana, you either have to take across the border from Brazil at midnight or <laughs> or yeah, pay a double or triple duty on things. So maybe yeah, Maria will. That. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. <laughs> so there's an, another example of our work from this week. We have, uh, first of all, um, there's from Rolando, there's from Alana. I think we have several more files. We can just try opening them. Great. Motor, color. Oh, I don't have everyone here. Did everyone get their files on there? Oh, motor two? Oh, that's yours, Mar uh, Maria? Oh, it's from Maria. Here's another piece oh. of the cordless oh. drill. So they're looking like they're ready to print. We we just have to turn the printer. <laughs> wow. And you have magnetic PLA? Yes, I have some. So And we also have all the wires and things, so we may be able to try to put something together very quickly. Now, are do you have the magnets? Yeah, we have all the things required to make the motor. I want to um, order some PE... T A, what is the uh, pet G? Some pet G for the other motor parts because that's what it calls for. So okay. I'll probably order that. But I'll start with magnetic PLA part like this one. Yeah. So uh, now we're pretty close. Very nice. And is this identical to to the other motor or do we make some modifications? Well, there are definitely modifications because we only looked at the video and then worked backwards because we didn't have okay. a plan. So, but it was completely based on the video. So there's oh, another wow. one. So yeah, the students have done a really, so really good job. Did you kind of job. like make up the dimensions as closely as you could? That's exactly what we did. But with the magnets, uh, we worked backwards, and so we took uh, calipers and made the magnets, and then uh, determined the dimensions of the uh, sort of magnet holders, for example. So, so do it you was, think this is? This is legitimate for an independent build, or will that be like they're going to complain about us taking their design? Well, that's one thing I want to. It might be good to uh, do two things. One, we could contact Christoph Lima and tell her tell him what we've done. We haven't published this yet, and right. see what he would because we could offer him credit on it and uh, link to him and link a PayPal to him or something and. Yeah say that you could get his files and they are guaranteed to be good or ours like try your best and good luck yeah. <laughs> no guarantee yeah so ours but of course we'd always reference him and so because uh, i don't think our motor is going to come up to the same quality as his until several more iterations right yeah no so, that uh, is that would be something pretty impressive. i would like to do that but the other thing is we could just build this and maybe uh based on what we learned, come up with our own modified design and then thank him, but then have a completely independent design, maybe with a, no a different number of holes. Because one of the things here, this motor is actually very big. 
It will make Hadar very happy. His airplane will be more like a missile. <laughs> but... <laughs> and what's the si What's the diameter of the motor right now? I think it's bigger than a typical hand drill. Now, Christoph Leimer's original uh, motor is actually more like a hand drill size motor. This one is like a large airplane motor that will, <laughs> it's going to go fast. Yeah. It's... Now, the original one, uh, is that one also reasonably efficient? This one is much more efficient, right? Is that the idea? I think so. He modified his original design and got a much greater efficiency. So what we could do at the moment is just learn from what we have yeah. here, and build yeah. the motor anyway, but then we can tread lightly and make sure we contact Mr. Limer and yep. see what he thinks about open sourcing some substandard parts of his motor. <laughs> right. Because uh, like, uh, certainly his has been refined and very carefully done, and he's clearly an engineer, and we're not. So... Right. Um, once see, once we build it and we actually understand how this works, if we go into the theory a little more, we can actually make modifications, and th then we say, okay, this is we can create our own designs. Did you guys get exactly any into the the background of how it works or like the theory part to to start designing our own? And we went through the three circuits and the magnetic poles and the pulses of information, or sorry, the pulses of electricity. But yeah, our time was very short and able to yeah. like, basically doing university level engineering in a few short days. You can't really nice. do that. So, but we got an overview anyway. Yeah. No, that is great. Great progress. Uh, congratulations. So we'll hope, uh, what we hope to do with the Guyanese team here, we want to stay in touch. They're going back to Guyana. We were just this morning discussing uh, collaborative literacy. So I showed them GitLab, which is kind of like GitHub. And uh, yeah. we wrestled with that and finally got it working. But then we also are looking into sharing over Google Files. Oh, thank you so much, Lev. Oh, so good. Good. Thank awesome you very much. Of, like, kind of yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you very much. Oh, Most appreciated. Like, so yeah. <laughs> we just got some free food delivered here from the cooking students. It's an wow. enchilada. <laughs> so right. um, that's the um, what we're hoping to do then is to stay in touch with the Guyanese team and maybe we'll support them to also by building the motor. I have several parts here that may be extra and I may be able to send off the parts we have to Guyana. And maybe uh, we've also fixed their 3D printer and hopefully uh, they're getting a few replacement parts and they'll be able to start 3D printing. So this afternoon we're going to focus on getting their 3D printer working, and then yeah. uh, and then hopefully they will be able to continue the work from Guyana, and then we continue collaborating online. That's our our idea. So nice. This so they're going to have one 3D printer down there. Yeah, for now. Yeah, and they brought it down from Guyana. Yeah. Brought it up from Guyana. Yeah, they brought it from Guyana because there were some pieces missing. What happened last year? We gave them a 3D printer from our STEM program, but it didn't fit in any one suitcase, so it was split over three or four or five suitcases. The other parts are probably in somebody's suitcase still. <laughs> oh, I so see. So we're not sure there were 10 of them, and we're missing now, a few key parts. Are you going to be able to get away without the duties on that? Well, it'll be uh, probably torn down at least, at least a little. They get into the country the first time as bits. As long as it's not a completed product, mm -hmm. you can take in half a car to Guyana, but it's just not a full car. You can weld yeah. it back to it once you get it there and you avoid the duties. Yeah. <laughs> I Great think idea. you would benefit from that because you're very good at welding. So yeah. <laughs> you should come down there, Martin. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. <laughs> All right. So um, there are. that's a summary of what we've been doing. I hope yeah. Uh, yeah, we can move forward on this. And of course, uh, we'll follow up with some more emails and phones afterward. Uh, what we aim to do with the remainder of our sessions for the OSE is to just create a Google Drive uh, folder for their work and put it aside the Nanjing students' work. And then we start building a repository of experience. So they've also done some filming. I hope that we can maybe find a way to post the films on YouTube or something and as raw footage, and then we can start building up a repository of instruction. Also. Oh, that'll be, oh, that'll be, that'll be great. That'll be Did great. you take some pictures of what? Pictures of what? Videos, what, what? Pardon? Um, um, what did you take videos? You take videos? Uh, they were running some videos during the introductory CAD sessions, for example. So they were very directed. 
the um, so we are systematically building all the prerequisite skills, the polar patterns, the sketches, the extrusions, and the pockets, for example, required to make these parts that we made. Excellent. Yeah, put up, start, you know, like on your YouTube or wherever, just post it, post it okay. and start a repository because then someone else can edit that. If we have that footage, yeah. then we can edit it, but you got to get it up into the net. Good. So we'll work with the team to see if we can do that from now. Uh, is there any way that the team can can uh, also document anything on the wiki? Like, for example, did anyone take any pictures or anything like that? Can you put it up on your social media so we can also include it or embed it? Certainly. I think we'll start by putting them on the G Drive, link that to the wiki, and then we'll see if someone can do some piece-by-piece -piece highlight photos on the wiki and or on the social media. Yeah, just, I mean, the e I find the easiest is if you don't want to worry about uploading why I suggest social media like Facebook or Instagram is you take all the pictures like Facebook it, post it, and then you can embed it on a wiki. So that's nice. a convenient way so you don't have to do double uploading. That's nice. Okay. That's very good. So we'll see if the team can work on that part because they're also yeah. working on a media release for the Guyanese newspapers. So the thing about Guyana with a story like this, you can probably get into the front page or, or into a prominent page anyway. So nice. <laughs> Excellent. Wow. We can be famous in Guyana. <laughs> well, you've met a sizable part of the population already right here. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, well, we've uh, thank you very much for visiting us this morning virtually, Marchin, and hopefully we can all meet in person one day. That would be really great. And, yeah. Uh, what are the what are the prospects of of getting a club like how many students are there i mean how many other schools are there in in guyana uh, there are about five or six other schools no. <laughs> there are lots yeah but uh, uh the students at nations are in the capital so it's very convenient and so they're also at the most likely spot to be have reliable internet as far as i know uh-huh uh, be able to do such collaboration because I cannot imagine doing this from Lethem yet unless we have a satellite. Right. Yeah. yeah. And any other teachers that may be interested or, or not really this is what we have? Uh, Mr. Khan is here. He's waving. He's got his hand up. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sure we can dig up a few more colleagues of Mr. Khan. The original physics teacher was to show up but her uh, visa never quite was uh, accepted. Mr. Khan, is do you think you can find any other people that are interested in this work? Or are you the only person interested in this in Guyana as a teacher? Uh, at my school, I could find at least four or five more teachers. Um, one is an engineer, um, and about two others, they're already trained in robotics. So, but oh, at that's cool. basic level, not advanced. Do you find a way more? Okay. Yeah, well, after we show them show them some good work, probably we can get more people interested because people like to see good results and I think we're producing them. Yeah. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah. So, good. So, uh, we have some good prospects moving forward and Mr. Okay. Khan and I have a plan to, act, act, we have a plan to make a plan, basically, to keep in touch. And, oh yeah, Sonny at the back here. Do you guys have any resources for open source ecology that other people can have to give to other people? Like, for example, if Mr. Khan were to give a like a poster or a summarized like pamphlet of some sort that presents open source ecology to his colleagues so that they can read up on it real quick. I know you guys have a crash course, the 16 things and TED Talk is included in that. Yeah. And those are great, but like just like a quick read over that Mr. Khan can hand out to the faculty and that it's just like key points. This is what we do. This is what um, you can do for your students. This is why we're important kind of thing. Uh, if you, like, yeah. Okay. So that sounds like we should prepare some kind of a thing. So you're saying something specifically for teachers of STEM? Yeah. Yeah. So people who are yeah. interested who want to start a club like this in their schools, if you have a like a startup kit or something, because I know you guys have fellows, right? You guys have the fellow program, and then you guys have senior fellows who come in 
later who become like the person who leads the clubs. But if you guys have like resources, like posters or pamphlets that you guys can just be like, here, this is what we're about. And it's just like a quick and go and you, uh, contact this email or uh, look at this social media thing for more information and stuff. Um, yeah. I was wondering if you guys had stuff like that because I didn't see it on the website. Mm, we can do better on that. The, the best thing we have so far is on the microfactory.opensourceecology.org, which shows professional education. So the way we get people on is you, the teacher wants to get like a three-day training on crash course on how we work at open source ecology. Uh, but we can definitely put together some better materials for how to start an OSC club, how to, how to onboard teachers to this work. So that's... So that's something that, uh, this is very new because we just started from zero in November. Yeah. So that, that's an yeah. excellent suggestion because we have a friend in BC that might have helped him to maybe help the school board understand what's going on. You just did something yesterday or the other day in uh, Kansas City, didn't you? And then you have someone in yeah. Netherlands uh, starting to like grow around. So it would be really great for us to do that. And maybe we can support that work here as well. And if you're so, trying to school boards, yeah. Uh, having a, uh, like a conscious document that takes into consideration uh, uh, their curriculum requirements for their region. For example, uh, if you have each uh, one, I know it's a lot of work and stuff, but if you have each one tailored to the curriculum and their requirements for their students. That's really good. That so that's, repeat that, I think repeat that comment. That I can work on with uh, Pascal, cause he's in Quebec. And then yeah. I could work, we may be able to generate something and uh, maybe some of us at the STEM uh, course could also do that. If anyone's still looking for a project, there's a good yeah, one. I mean, like, hey, ah, hey, there we are. And, uh, make some posters for so curriculum. Uh, I'll bring that up next Wednesday at my course because there may be some students who still haven't selected a project and that would be an excellent one. It involves the curriculum and it involves the ultimate STEM project. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So uh, yeah. I think it leads from what we're doing here. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So, well, thank you very much again, uh, Dr. Jakubowski, and we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. And maybe I'll follow up with some emails and phones and, uh, that's great. Oh, thank you for doing excellent work. That's great. Let's continue and make this happen. So, uh, we can say farewell or we'll see you. Hasta pronto. We'll see you um, William's been promising a Guyana trip for some time, so we'll see you down there. Good. Ah, good. We're okay. going to organize okay. Guyana somehow. Excellent. Okay. All right. Sounds very good. And take care, Marcin. We'll see you. Thank you, William. Bye-bye.